In this lesson, we're going to look at finding equations of linear and exponential functions, and we'll be working towards finding them when we don't have the y-intercept. Now, really, all we need is two points to define a linear or an exponential function. Our first example, we do have the y-intercept because it says 0, 12, so that is the y-intercept, and then the other point is 1, 3. So we're first going to decide that a straight line goes through these. We're going to find a linear equation. So if I make a table out of these, and I have 0, 12, and 1, 3, because these points are right in a row or they have integer values in a row, I can use that to find the slope. So when the x goes up 1, the y is going down 9, which means we have a slope of negative 9, and our y-intercept is 12. So a linear equation would be y equals negative 9x plus 12. For the exponential function, the a value is also, in this case, our y-intercept, that number that goes in the front in this form, so that is 12. And b here, that's our multiplier number, to go from 12 to 3, we can do 3 divided by 12 here. Let me just erase that bottom line that's unnecessary. Okay, so 3 divided by 12, the second number divided by the first number, will give us that change number. So this is going to be 1 fourth or 0.25. I'm going to use 1 fourth here. So the exponential equation that will bring us through those two points is 12 times 1 fourth to the x. Now, I'm not going to get a calculator out for the video, but just to confirm that these are the two correct equations that pass us through the points, if you graphed both of these equations on your calculator and set our window to negative 1 to 2 in the x direction and negative 5 to 50 in the y direction. So if I graphed the negative 9x plus 12, we would see that it passes through 0, 12, which is approximately here, and also 1, 3, which we're going to say is approximately here. Okay, not perfect. This, we know that this line has a slope of negative 9, which is pretty steep negative. It just doesn't look that way because of the scales that I use. The y values are, the scale is so much bigger than the x values. If I did this exponential function, 12 times 1 fourth to the x, I would see that there's an exponential curve that goes through those two points. And this is a little further apart if we set our window in our calculator like that, but you get the idea. Um, so we already talked about why this situation is simple because we have the y-intercept of the function and as well as a point where x is 1, so we can just take that single jump to find our, um, our parameters of our functions. Uh, if we have different points, if we don't have the y-intercept, the points aren't in a row, we're going to need a different method. Now, I also want to point out, it seems like I could draw an exponential curve a different way to go through those two points. This is the only truly exponential curve that goes through those two points. There is only one exponential curve that passes through any two points. So let's look at the next one where the points are not right in a row. We're going to do linear first. Now, in ninth grade, you learned a little different method for this. Um, we're going to use systems because systems work for everything. Um, there is a way to find the slope, plug that in to find the y-intercept. We're going to use a system method for this. So let's just write this out as a table to talk about why this one's different. So this time I have 236 and 5121.5. So the first issue is I don't have my y-intercept, so I can't say b is this number right away. And I'm not making a jump by 1. Now, we could still, using the slope formula, easily find the slope between these two points, but as I mentioned, we're going to use a system. So we're going to start it out. It says plug each point into the equation y equals mx plus b to create a system of two equations. It's a little easier if you write the equation with the larger x value first. So I am going to plug in this point first to follow that advice. With y equals mx plus b, so y in this first point is 121.5. We don't know the slope. The x value is 5, and we don't know the b. With my other equation, now we're going to plug in this one, 
the y is 36 equals m times 2 plus b. Now I wrote it this way, but from now on, um, and I'm actually just going to erase it here for spacing issues, instead of writing m5 and m2, I'm going to write 5m and 2m, just because that's going to make it a little easier for me to go through this process. So I have 5m and 2m. Now, this is actually already set up to use elimination because I have a little different, you know, kind of in the opposite order. Usually we write the number last. I have my numbers, my Ms, and my Bs. And we could take a step to multiply my second equation by negative one to make the Bs opposite. But since this one is already set up, I'm actually just gonna subtract the equation. So we usually did adding when we had our trickier systems. Here I'm just gonna subtract the two equations, then distribute my negative sign and if I subtract, the b's will always cancel. 5m minus 2m is 3m. And 121.5 minus 36 is 85.5. We have eliminated b, so we can solve for m. And I get that the m value by dividing by 3 is 28.5. So that's my slope. And then from here, just like in any other system, we plug in the value we have to find the other value. I'm going to use the second equation just because that one looks a little easier. So here I have 36 equals 2 times 28.5 plus b. 36 equals 57 plus b. And then when I subtract 57 from both sides, I get that b equals negative 21. So these are my parameters, my slope and my y-intercept and I can plug them in now to get my final equation. So the equation of the linear function that passes through these two points is 28.5x minus 21. On the next page, we're gonna look at how to do the same thing with an exponential function. So on this page, I have the same two points the 236 and the 5, 121.5. This time when I set up my system of equations, I'm gonna plug them into the exponential function because that's what I'm trying to find here. So that is my exponential equation, y equals a times b to the x. I am once again gonna plug in the larger x value first. It just makes actually this one even easier to work with. It can, keeps things more positive and easier to think about. So we have 121.5 equals a times b to the fifth. And then in my second point, I have 36 equals a times b squared. Here, subtracting is not going to work. But if I divide the two equations without doing anything else to them, my a values will always cancel because I have a divided by a. Over here, I might get some sort of crazy decimal. In this case, I get 3.375 can be worse than that. This is actually a decimal that's the whole decimal. And then over here, because I'm dividing, I subtract the exponents and I get b cubed. So to solve for b, I raise both sides to the one third power. So that's just thinking about the cubed. If I multiply three times one third, those two will cancel. Well, one third power is the same thing as taking the cube root. It's just a little easier to write the exponent. And then over here, I don't have to switch this over to root form or anything. I just type that in my calculator. Um, and that actually, in this case, gives me a B value of 1.5. From there, it's just a matter of plugging it in. Um, I'm going to choose that second equation. Just looks a little easier to work with. So 36 equals A times 1.5 squared. That's my plug-in. Um, this gives me 36 equals 2.25a when I do 1.5 squared. And then I'm going to divide by 2.25, and that gives me an a value of 16. So the exponential function, the unique exponential function that goes through this, these two points is y equals 16 times 1.5 to the x. And the nice thing is 
you can graph this. You can graph the equation you found on the other page for the linear function, and you will see in your table that these two points are there.